Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Shuchita Verma and today I'm going to discuss about a very important topic in biotechnology and biology that is Bt toxin. And this Bt toxin is being produced by the organism that is Bacillus thuringiensis. Now Bacillus thuringiensis is a gram-positive aerobic spore-forming bacteria, right? So what happens is that when the spore is being formed inside this bacteria, just beside the spore, there is a formation of this crystal protein that is known as cryotoxin or commonly it is known as this Bt toxin. So as you can say, it is Bt toxin or cryotoxin or the crystal protein or even the parasporal body. It is all one and the same things, right? And the genes that are being responsible for the formation of this toxin are the cry genes. Why it is named cry? Because this protein or this toxin is crystalline in nature. That is the reason the name is cry genes. And it confers pest resistance. That is resistance against pests or insects like the larva or the caterpillar of bollworm or gypsy moth. Okay. So this is just about the introduction. In my next slide, I'm going to talk about the mechanism that is being responsible as soon as it is being ingested into the gut of the caterpillar, this parasporal body, you know, it, uh, it is present in the inactive form as the protoxin, as the protoxin. Now, due to the action of the protease enzyme, it, is con it gets converted into, into the active toxin. It gets converted into active toxin. This active toxin then integrates into the gut epithelium cell membrane of the larvae, right? And now, as soon as the integration takes place, what happens is that there is a formation of the hexagonal pore. Now, because of the pore formation, there is an instant osmotic imbalance leading to the influx of water, cations and so many of the ATPs are being lost, thereby causing the cell lysis. So, as soon as the cell lysis takes place in the cell membrane, it leads to the death of the insect. Now, this is what we want. We don't want our insect to destroy our crop, right? So, this is how the PD toxin helps to kill the insect that is being destroying our, the, destroying our crop, right? This is the whole mechanism, how it works in savans it is being ingested by the insect, right? So, this is all about the mechanism of the BT toxin. Moving on to the next slide, we have some questions. One of the major question is that what are the key advantages of using this Bt toxin over other methods, right? One thing is that it is a species specific. It is a species specific that it is going to affect a particular species only. Not every species is being affected. Like it is, if it is effective against bollworm, that it is only going to uh, target the bollworm and not any other insect is being, in, uh, you know, affected by it. Another advantage is that it does not harm any other life form. Supposedly, we have used Bt toxin to, you know, kill a bollworm or to kill any other larva that is, you know, destroying our crop like cotton or like brinjal. So, if we consume that brinjal, it is not going to affect us. It is not going to give any adverse side effect on human beings, right? So, it is only going to affect the particular insect on which it is going to act. Then thirdly, it does not cause any pollution into the water bodies because it does not go into the water body. So there is no point of pollution to any of the water sources available there. Another very important question which is being often asked by the examiner is that, that because the Bt toxin is that much effective, what is the reason that it only kills the targeted species and it does not confer any action on the bacterium which actually is responsible for its production? The answer is very, very simple that in the bacterium, it is present in the inactive form. So, unless and until it won't reach the gut of the, oh my, uh, gut of the insect, the targeted insect, it is not going to convert into the active form. And once it is being converted into the active form, then only it is going to affect the, it is going to lead to the death of the insect. When in the inactive form? then there is no question of harming the bacterium, right? So this is all about the beta toxin for today. In case you have any queries or any comments, then it is, uh, uh, then you can leave the comment in the comment section. I'm going to reply to each of your queries and each of your comments. So that is all for today. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.